The timeline editor is intended mainly for creating and editing timelines for your show. If your show runs only one timeline at a time, it may make sense, in some cases, to run your show from the editor during an actual performance. However, in many cases, you need to run several timelines at the same time. Or you may need to run them quickly, on cue, without taking the time to load them into the editor first. The solution to this is cue buttons. Over here is the cue button panel with eight buttons in it. As you can see, I've loaded a project with quite a few timelines. I'm going to click on one of the timelines and drag it into one of the cue buttons. You'll notice that button takes on the name of the timeline. I'll show you how to change that in a minute. When I click on the button, it plays the timeline. All timelines run by cue buttons appear here in the cue list and disappear when they're finished running. I'll get back to the cue list later. To add a new button, drag the timeline into this border area, away from the buttons. To delete a button, right-click on a button, and select Delete Button. I can also click and drag to move the buttons around. Up here are the button group tabs. One button group can hold up to 16 buttons. To add a new button group, right-click in the tab area, and select New Group. Here you can give the group a name and change the tab text and background colors. Click F1 for more details on these other functions. To change an existing group, right-click on the tab and select Group Properties. Now, right-click on a button and select Button Properties. As you can see, cue buttons can do a lot of things, but in this video we're going to focus specifically on running timelines. This field lets you enter the text that appears on the button. If you want the title to be on two lines, separate the text with a backslash. Two lines is all you get. In this section, you select what happens when the button is pressed. As I said, we'll just stick with playing timelines for now. Click here, and you'll see a list of all the timelines in the project. Since we dragged the timeline in from the Timelines folder, this was selected for us automatically. But you could just as easily select a different timeline to play. In this field, you can enter the name that will appear in the queue list while the timeline is playing. By default, it will be the name of the timeline, and it's generally best to just leave it that way. Click this box, and the timeline will play repeatedly in the queue list until stopped. I'll show you that in a minute. Check on this box, and only one of the timelines will play at a time. Notice that when I click on the same button multiple times, I get multiple instances of the same timeline playing at the same time in the queue list. If I check this box, I can click the button several times, but only one instance of the timeline appears. I won't be able to run another timeline from this button until the first one has finished playing. Here we tell the timeline to run as many of them as we like. A foreground timeline can be set to one of 20 foreground levels. Only one timeline of a particular level can be running at any given time. For example, if I'm currently running a timeline foreground level 10, and I press a Q button to run another timeline as foreground level 10, the first timeline will automatically be stopped and removed from the queue list before the second timeline starts. The other settings in this window are beyond the scope of this video. As always, I recommend the F1 option. Right now, I'd like to briefly get back to the queue list. The queue list shows all timelines that are currently running as the result of pressing a queue button. Timelines run from the timeline editor will not appear in the queue list. I'll start by running some timelines. In the queue list, you can see the name of the timeline, the current playback time, the remaining playback time, and the playback status, which will tell you if the timeline is foreground, background, looped, or paused. These are the playback controls. These buttons on the bottom affect all timelines currently in the list. Click this button to pause all timelines. 
Click this one to resume paused timelines. This one stops and removes all timelines from the list. If some timelines in the list are playing continuously in a loop, clicking this button will cause these timelines to continue until the current loop is finished, and then stop. This top row of buttons does exactly the same as the lower row, but only applies to selected timelines in the queue list rather than all of them at once. You can select multiple timelines in the list by holding down the control key on your keyboard while clicking on timelines. These other two buttons here are mostly for convenience. This one mutes all audio playback. This one zeroes the level output on all fixture channels, essentially making all lamps go dark. That pretty much covers all you need to know about cue buttons in the cue list for now, just for other videos.